Hi. So this is section 16 on recombination and generation, which is overall a very big topic. And I remember when I was a student, I struggled with this topic quite a bit. And um, it was hard for me to understand. And um, I tried in these uh, segments here to really divide out the material and not let it become a pushing of analytical symbols but trying to give you some insight into trying to understand what these processes mean, what some of these numbers mean, and begin to understand it fundamentally, rather than at the end just getting some expressions where you can plug in some numbers and you just go with it. So I'm trying to instill some intuition and some understanding. So in the first segment, all we're doing is introducing capture coefficients and capture cross-sections uh, sort of as an overall concept. Then we will dive down into deriving something called the Shockley-Reed-Hall expression. That's four segments filled with some math, uh, filled with approximations, filled with some insights. Then we'll apply that to uh, special cases. Then we'll look at uh, other recombination processes, Auger and direct. And then we'll look at interface states. All of that are then relevant to overall devices. So all of this lecture set here in section 16 is relevant really to real devices. So it's not just symbols, some expressions that you plug in numbers. And that being said, we're going to start looking first at indirect recombination and trap-assisted uh, recombination. So there's two views you can have of this. So there's an electron uh, coming down into a trap populating a trap and a hole hopping up into the trap, basically annihilating one electron. So one electron and one hole are getting destroyed and energy is coming out of the system by a phonon, lattice vibration. Okay, So that means this trap is actually a, a spatial, local thing. You could think of that as a, a place in our device a foreign atom that can provide a way of taking in an electron and emitting an electron. Okay? And in the process, an electron can overall lose energy and go from the conduction band into the valence band. This is very relevant for silicon germanium devices in transistors, solar cells, etc. So it's a fundamental process that is critical to devices. All right. So let's get a physical view of this carrier capture or recombination process. Let's imagine we represent our system, our crystal, with uh, just this green box. So it's absent of atoms, per se, but still this green box is full of vibrations um, that can uh, take on energy and dissipate energy. The best analogy I've heard in, in the past uh, was my first mentor in Germany that said, imagine you have a, a mattress, just a spring mattress, all the cloth taking off. Have you ever seen that thing? It's a pretty complicated mess, but you can imagine wiggling it a little bit, and uh, you can imagine how the tail end of the mattress also then wiggles, how it propagates uh, a vibrational information. So that's what this green stuff is here, highly complicated, many vibrational modes in the system, and these modes can take up energy from excitations like from electrons. All right, now let's consider the system. We have three electron filled traps and three hole traps, hole uh, empty traps. So we'll call about empty traps, we may label that PT, or traps with holes, hole traps. And we have electron filled traps, NT. They sum up to a total number of traps. So in this pictorial example here, we have 3 plus 3. Okay. Now let's place some electron and some hole into it. Exactly one hole, one electron. And let's imagine they move about. So this electron will not just straight shoot through the structure. But let's assume we're doing this in equilibrium and um, or uh, not far away from equilibrium, we don't have much electric field applied, and this electron is kind of scattering about. 
overall this electron scatters a lot. And so it goes with Brownian motion through the structure and eventually it encounters an empty trap. So the electron can then recombine or be attracted into this empty trap. Okay? So if that happens, this empty trap turns into a electron fill trap. So this red trap here turns into blue trap here. So it goes from empty to electron filled. Okay, you stay the you um, change the the state of the of the trap. Okay. Now this uh, this hole still is zooming around. It can recombine, <clears throat> say, with this blue empty trap, uh, electron fill trap. Okay, so let let it recombine, and then this blue electron fill trap turns into a red empty trap again. Okay, so at the end of all of this, we have these traps have destroyed uh, one electron and one hole. So they destroyed one electron hole pair. Overall, it doesn't have to happen at the same location. Right? This is what the pictogram shows. It also shows that there's no change in NT and PT overall. There's also no change in uh, charge. Okay? I mean, we still have the same amount of holes, uh, electron fill traps and uh, empty traps. In this case, they balance out to 3 plus 3, so we end up with 3 here, and 2 and 2, versus the original 3 plus 3. It's just the location of what was filled and what is um, empty has changed. And we haven't changed charge. We had one electron and one hole, that's minus E plus E, zero net charge. And those two net charges disappe uh, disappeared, they got destroyed so to speak. So no net change of charge either. All right. So that's what we're overall after, trying to understand uh, this process. Okay. Now, in 3D, this electron is moving through a geometry, and let's assume it uh, migrates or travels through this system with a thermal velocity. I'll talk about the thermal velocity in a second. And let's assume uh, we want to figure out um, the, how is this electron getting captured. Okay? So it'll, it'll hit these, um, um, these capture sites. And let's figure out the relative area of these capture sites and the relative volume. So this electron encounters, migrates through a certain volume. Okay, there is a certain amount of hole fill trap, PT. They have a relative area. As you imagine, you go through this structure, it's like shooting a, um, a, uh, um, a gun, if you will, and shooting it on targets. You try to figure out uh, how the size of the target in two dimensions that you want to aim for. So this is the relative area of your targets in this two-dimensional cross-section of a three-dimensional object. Okay. And the total uh, flow is the total area times T. Okay. So we can put in our symbols now where this area cancels out, time cancels out, and we have the thermal velocity we have the number of uh, hole fill trapped, and we have a, what's called a, a scattering cross-section or a capture cross-section. And we'll talk more about that cross-section in the next slide. All right, so here's an electron scattering cross-section. The expression that we have here. And we introduce something called a electron capture coefficient or an electron capture rate cn and that is related is the product really here of the scattering cross section and the thermal velocity of the carrier okay so cn is going to be related 
to some temperature. And this is a fundamental uh, concept. If you ever took a course on statistical mechanics, you know that uh, um, thermal uh, distribution of particles goes as one half kT uh, for each dimension that the particle moves in. So in a three-dimensional space, the, a, a thermal particle has a thermal energy of 3 kT. And we can translate that into a thermal velocity um, of in 1 half m stars v, v uh, thermal squared. Okay, So either way, what that means is this V thermal has some temperature dependence in it, which means Cn has some temperature dependence in it. So the electron capture coefficient has temperature dependence to it. Okay. All right. But what does it mean? Oh. Typical thermal um, uh, velocities are 10 to the 7 centimeter per second. So in the field of semiconductors, we very much use a, a uh, metric system, but uh, still lengths are usually in centimeters for historical reasons. So we typically don't real deal with cubic uh, meters or, or cubic nanometers, uh, even though cubic nanometers now make a whole lot more sense. It's still people are thinking in terms of units of centimeters. All right, so let's figure out what could be some reasonable values of these um, capture, capture cross-sections, okay? So here's this two-dimensional system, and we're shooting at these targets with ballistic um, particles. So let's look at a, um, a crystal, for example. How many of the atoms do you have in one dimension? Let's look at this silicon crystal here. Again, you can go to Crystal Viewer. on NanoHub and, and play um, with some of these crystals. But if you look into the one-dimensional cross-section, you see that you have four atoms in the, into the direction, in one particular direction, okay? So four atoms in a lattice constant that is roughly uh, 0.5 nanometers, okay? So that means on average the, um, the distance is 0.12 nanometers, which also corresponds to roughly the bond length in, in this kind of crystal. All right, so the distance is 0 0.12, 10 to the minus 7 centimeter. If that, mean, that means the radius is ballpark 10 to the minus 8 centimeters, and the cross-section is roughly 10 to the six, minus 16 set, square centimeters. All right, so for zinc, you can measure these things because zinc was an important recombination center. And it turns out the numbers are 2 times 10 to the 16 centimeters squared. So this is how you roughly get some numbers that make sense. All right, now let's imagine we have this um, uh, um, acceptor, uh, this trap, and it has a cross-section of 10 to the 16. So let's assume it's empty, and it now gets filled with an uh, electron. Now, it would like to attract a hole, and it turns out that the hole capture rate is um, not quite a factor of 10 larger. Well, it's actually a factor of 10 larger. Um, so the cross-section here uh, is larger, okay? So this electron hit an empty uh, trap, filled it, and now there's a, a larger cross-section for a hole to come in. Now these values can be measured, and they have been measured. Now what could happen also in principle is that this trap could take, after it took on uh, an electron, it could take on another electron. But that probability or the cross-section of that scattering event to happen is much, much smaller. So capturing a second electron in the same trap is smaller by a factor of 100. So 
let's compare these circles. So an electron has gone in and filled this trap, and it's blue now. For another electron to come in, it'll see a very small area, the red one. But a hole coming in like this, it would be rather likely to uh, attract another hole. Now, for the same trap to take on another electron is extremely unlikely. So we're not even going to consider it. It's a, a huge area. But the cross-section for an electron to attract a, um, a, a hole when it has two electrons in it already, so this one took on another electron, is really, really high. So this becomes really large compared to this, compared to this, okay? So these capture cross-sections depend on the filling of the state and the degree of the filling of the state. But typically, we deal with these two numbers here, like a capture cross-section for an empty um, uh, trap and a capture cross-section for a full trap to attract an, a hole, okay? And the likelihood to attract a hole into a, um, a filled trap is larger than the uh, capture cross-section for an for a hole filled trap to capture an electron by a ballpark a factor of 10. Okay, this is called a cascade model, and that was developed at Bell Labs. These values here are for zinc, but they can be derived for a couple of different materials, of course. They can be measured, etc. But the theory really provided insight into capture coefficients and the capture cross sections. So, with that, we will be using these capture coefficients quite a bit in all of these segment, coming up segments. And in the next segment, we're going to derive the shockley reed hall recombination rate where electrons come down into the trap and a hole goes up to destroy that electron. And in the process, uh, an electron and a hole are destroyed. So I'll see you at the next section.